Hello, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, Today's date, it is uh, November 28th of 2019. It's 8.30 a.m. in the morning. I just woke up from a nap. That's about all I really have is, is naps. This, as you can see, is Thanksgiving in the United States of America. And... I, uh, this popped up, um, Bryant Park, two Herald Square in near- on YouTube, you can get the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade. Um, that's something Americans, uh, would watch on television, you know, over the air television. Every Thanksgiving, you would watch the, uh, Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Um, I just noticed, you know, that it's uh, available on YouTube. I think we've watched every single movie at least twice, four times. A hundred times? This Black Friday, the holiday magic is at Verizon. Get Disney Plus on us for a year. With plans starting... It's, uh... (sighs) Uh, being sponsored by or they're doing it uh, Verizon's they're, it's a Verizon 360 Live so they're putting in a, uh, some special effects uh, that type of that type of thing I only had it here had it on for a few minutes um let me kill the audio for one thing. Okay. Killed. Okay. Okay. Um, I had a doctor's appointment the other day that was had been scheduled. I showed up at the doctor's office. Just it was just for a my six months exam, and they told me that uh, well we called yesterday and and cancel the appointment. The doctor isn't available today. I, uh, I have my cell phone with me all the time. Uh, but I, I'm just, I don't make or receive cell phone or phone call, any kind of phone call. I just don't do it unless I have to. Sometimes I check on a prescription or something by, you know, dialing into the pharmacy and, checking see if my prescriptions are ready or whatever but I just don't and uh, so I don't doubt that they called my my phone didn't ring uh, I'm not sure what I have turned off by the way I just got an update this is a Sony phone and I just got one of the notices that uh, software had been updated you know, not the the uh, Android apps, but something with the system. I know it's not a new version of you know, because this is an old phone, not a new version of Android. So it's an update to their. I haven't checked to see if I see anything different. Uh, I am. Let's see. I am seventy eight years old. I wanted to, actually, we're going to be exploring it together. Uh, Let me minimize this. Uh, Now, why did it pop up? Uh, Something popped up, and... um, I think I I have this, and I thought we might explore it together. Uh, let's see, do I want to minimize this? Now I may want to leave that. We might want to go back and check that. Um, this is the first time I've read this. Uh, 
uh, back when I got married, I'm not sure how long we've been married. Uh, when I got married, something came up and I asked my wife, I said, can you, can you picture that image or an image or whatever? She says, yeah. And then I asked her some more questions. Well, you can see, yeah, sure, I can do, you know, I can do. And I said, I, I can't. I think that's the first time. Well, I knew probably that I worked, I don't know, 10 years or more as a welder, water maker, built railroad cars, trucks. And I, you know, bought uh, some books on, uh, in the beginning, on blueprint reading. And I mean, and I built for myself, you know, I built for myself some stuff. I had a, a gas welding outfit in my garage. But I noticed that it, it was difficult for me. The, the uh, Not the basic stuff, but some more advanced stuff that uh, I thought, you know, hey, I can be a welder where I'm working, but I can't be... Uh, what they, I can't be the, the guy who's uh, deciding on the giant steel vessel using blueprints, which we had. I can't be the guy that's going to decide where a hole is going to go that has, you know, where we're going to, where we're going to cut the hole or do something like that. I thought, I, and I, so I thought it, think that I'm, that it was, you know, partially mathematical, that my math really wasn't good enough, you know, geometry or trigonometry, which I never took. <laughs> um, so I think at that point, I, you know, I, but now in my life, I took uh, the Peace, for, Peace Corps exam. I passed. I didn't go into the Peace Corps. I think I mentioned about that before, but I took the exam and I passed. In fact, I think they didn't tell me the score, but I, when I walked out after taking that, um, I, uh, I think that I aced it. I think that was like, if they'd asked me, uh, we're going to give you a test. What question would you like on there? Because when I, and I bet you they changed it after that because I was one of the first people, uh, to take the Peace Corps exam uh, because on that test there weren't any of these block things you know blocks okay which which one of these block which one of these objects you know if you twisted would be uh, oh my god those things you know or, for me um, I'm just multiple I'll just you know, just I'll just guess at those. But I passed the Peace Corps exam, but there wasn't anything on there like that. Uh, I passed the uh, Federal Protective Officer exam. I didn't take the job because one, they put a freeze immediately uh, after they tested us all. I passed the test and was waiting then for a job to become available and for a year or two, I forget how long, no jobs became available and by the time that a job became available it was in Des Moines, Iowa at the federal building and well, that one I, I put in that I would take it but there was one opening and they had three of us were picked and then it was up to Des Moines, Iowa to pick which one and I didn't get picked. And then after that, that then after that, it was uh, they put another freeze on. The federal government was doing, you know, the Congress was we're cutting, you know, we're cutting down on the big federal government on the, you know, and so they kept putting these freezes into effect. Uh, they did the same thing with the post office, although okay, I took the post office exam for clerk, 
and uh, they had mail handlers and clerks. And uh, I passed the exam and went to work for the post office for, I don't know, a month, two months, something like that, and I told them to take the job and shove it because I was a welder and I could make more money, but it was really stupid. I really should have stayed with the post office. Anyway, I took these exams, so. But this ability to image things, then I realized at some point uh, when I was working in security for 30 years that uh, I, had a, I had to make sure, you know, because if I, I just can't pull up an image, you know, like somebody else, a police officer or a security officer, uh, see somebody, let's, or say a vehicle. Okay, you see the vehicle. Okay, then the vehicle takes off or whatever. Okay, then I guess I can't do it. I, you know, I could, from memory, I could say, okay, it was a red car, and what, but I think other people, most of you, maybe all of you who are watching this video, you can, I don't know if you, I don't think you have to close your eyes. Maybe you do, but you could pull up. Okay. It was a red car, uh, blah, blah, blah. And I couldn't, that was a, I, and I, so I realized there was a problem in the area. I had no idea there was a name for it. And this is the first, let's see. Alv, I'm not even going to try to pronounce this, is a suggested name for condition where one does not possess a functioning mind's eye and can and cannot voluntarily visualize imagery. The phenomenon was first described by Francis Galton in 1880, but has since remained largely unstudied. Interest in the phenomena are renewed after the publication of a study in 2015. I... <laughs> I, well, of course, I kept working after I, but I, anyway, I, and I, I didn't retire till, well, the 30 year job and whatever I, or hospital, I, 2000, but I did the, I worked after that. I did the 2000 census, had to take an exam, but that was easy for the, uh, Census Bureau. And then I worked, you know, as a, in charge of security, contract security at a hospital in Florida. Then I worked, um, well, I had a bunch of jobs. Uh, but anyway, 20, 2015, so I, I guess it wouldn't have mattered too much if I'd have brought, if I'd have, if I'd have said back someplace, um, Hey, I can't see images. I don't, what would somebody say? Because I bet you all of you, if you fall in this classification with me, uh, which I guess somebody is saying that uh, congenital, I wonder if I can get that to uh, say out loud. Anyway, uh, back to here. So, back to here. Uh, okay, uh, assessment. Vividness of visual imagery questionnaire. So they have a questionnaire. <clears throat> Wonder how big it is. Let's see. Open in a new tab, because that might help me. Uh, well, whoop, whoops, whoops, uh, must be a long one or something. 
This questionnaire was developed in 1973 by a British psychologist, David Marks. It consists of 16 items in four groups of four items in which the participant is invited to consider the image formed in thinking about a specific scene and situation. The vividness of the image is rated along a five-point scale. Okay, um, I wouldn't be able to see an image. I mean, if, if it's on a piece of paper, you know, that's not what they're doing, though. They're saying, you know, I guess, uh, picture a, you know, uh, I guess, picture a yellow star. Okay, and then I don't, you know, I can't see anything. Blank. No yellow star, no naked lady. That's me. <laughs> That may be one reason, you know, I am not interested in, uh, now of course you can see, I mean, I could go someplace and see a, online and see porn, but it uh, really doesn't do anything for me. Um, well, I guess it could, you know, certain type of porn or whatever, but you know, I, I think there's that Wait, I think that enters into it someplace. Um, when Playboy first came out, I was a young man. Not sure how. When did Playboy start? Okay, 1962. So I uh, got—I graduated from high school in 1959. So from the very beginning, I uh, would—I had a subscription for a while. But I uh, now wait a minute. Seems like when I was in high school, I had Playboy uh, on the wall. You know, the centerfold. Anyway. Um, but I honestly, you know, people joke, men joked or whatever that um, they uh, bought uh, Playboy. They didn't buy it for the centerfold or the pictures, whatever. They bought it for the content or whatever, the stories or whatever. And actually, the, the articles that they ran and things like that were good. Um, I bought it to look at the centerfold, but I also read the articles that were good, and I liked the um, advertising that they had for, you know, uh, cognac, although I'm not a drinker, have never have been. You know, the, the products also. But they had uh, letters, I think it was. And that I, I did read. That, and I, then I bought later, like, Penthouse. And they had letters to the editor or whatever. And they, Penthouse, they had, like, Girls Next Door, where a husband or a wife or, or a, a husband or a boyfriend would send in a picture of his wife or girlfriend and and I liked looking at those, but I liked the letters to, and then eventually I got where Penthouse, yeah, Penthouse had letters, and people wrote in and told about what, they, you know, what really happened, uh, their fantasies or whatever, and I enjoyed reading that, and then uh, Penthouse had letters, had a penthouse letters or something that was just, you know, of course, advertising too and stuff, but uh, just those letters. And then I got where I was, I'd buy that and read that. But I never, I never ever bought a uh, VHS 
tape of porn or I went one time with a girlfriend. She wanted to go to a, a theater that showed porn and I took her. She was a, uh, what was it? Not a, uh, not a born again Christian. She was, uh, uh, not, not a Quaker, not a Mormon. Uh, but she was one of those groups that lived in a, like a, well, that, you know, they wore the stuff. It wasn't more, there wasn't the, uh, Quakers. And I can't remember the name, I can't remember the name of the, they, and she wanted to go to, to something. So I took her. That's the only time I've ever gone into a porn theater. Uh, but I think <laughs> if you have this, which I think I do, I know I do, uh, you may not be as interested in porn because I'm thinking that maybe if you have the ability to visualize imagery, uh, you see something, then uh, perhaps you could visualize yourself with that other person I can't, I couldn't do that. Let's see. Okay. Um, um, evaluate uh, quality of the mental image. Okay, a series of images. A relative, a relative. Let's see. Or oh, a relative. Is that real? I don't know. A rising sun, a shop that they know, and uh, rank how the image is from the perfect clear view. Anyway. First described, okay. Um, this is something I'll have to check out. I mean, it doesn't matter now. Um, See if, let's see if I can find out more on it. If you come up with something, let me know. Oh, here's more. Oh, no, not a bunch. Um, if you don't have this ability, what jobs should you not have? You know, a police officer, security officer, brain surgeon, maybe. Um, a whole bunch. And I bet you that for sure that if they, if what test should, you know, <clears throat> what test should you not, you know, what job should you not go and apply for where there's a test? Of course, I guess it depends on how, because they're going a score of uh, one to five. So I guess there are some people who can like the blocks. Let's see what it went. I think you know what, let's see, types of test. Let's see. Given below is a list of some common types of, let's see, wait a minute now. Types of software. Different types of testing and software. Well, they're talking about software here. Uh, blood test, <laughs> liver test. Got to go back Monday because my doctor was not available. And uh, oh, I know what it is. I am signed up for. That's what it is. That's what got me. DNA testing. I gave you a little bit of the... Uh, that's what it is. There was. They sent me an email occasionally and uh, ask, you know, uh, questions because... And it says, like, <clears throat> when they send me an, the, when the email is automated, you know, 
when they send the email, it says, uh, you know, thank you very much for partic participating. Uh, you're in the 80% range of people who are um, answering these questions, and the questions go on and on. And they send questions like, can you crack your knuckle or, you know, can you do, they ask all kinds of, all kinds of questions. You know, have you ever had a such and such a shot? Have you ever been in, told that you have such and such and whatever? And that's what it was. There was one, it, it, that's what came. And the question was uh, something about, can you visualize an image or do you have, and I didn't pay, it was, I, I was busy. So I answered a question, no, you know, it was like, yes, no, I don't, I don't know. I answered like, no. And then after that, and I answered that, then I didn't go on answering more questions. I logged out and then that stuck in my mind. And so then I woke up and that's, you know, so that's what it was. Because I wish, of course, I guess it was this name here this name I'm guessing because there was it said are you able to and then after it it said such and such a disease or condition or something and then I think I just went ahead and deleted the well no the I would have because uh, I would have just the message would have just taken me there but I was thinking uh, what was that what was that name so this must be <clears throat> this must be it I wonder if I can ask, let's see, let's see, of course there's going to be degrees of it, um, how many people have Okay, okay, this is this thing I uh, read all the time. I read these questions all the time. The inability to see images. Somebody, now this doesn't mean, although this person who's answering is a PhD, has a PhD in accelerator physics from the University of Hamburg. Because you know, when you see these things, you don't necessarily, that doesn't mean that, because I've answered a few I've been reading these things for years, and I've answered maybe five times questions that I thought, well, I, I had a perspective. Supposedly only a few percent of the population have it, but I think there's a lot of evidence that the condition exists in degrees. Ah, which, for example, there are only two very different sorts of physicists who are capable of visualizing motion and those who cannot. In order to be inclusive, the first language of physics is math, a language which can be understood regardless of your visualization ability. Unfortunately, an attitude of supremacy has developed among those who have mathematical talents, and I think that in many cases this has arisen to compensate for a visualization def deficit. Ah, okay, that's interesting. Okay. Okay. That answers it. Well, only a few percent. I don't want to be special in this area. I don't want to be... Oh... <laughs> And I don't think, I went to Catholic grade school and Catholic high school, and the Catholic grade schools that I went to, and probably the same with other, what well, I want to say private schools, because there's, you know, private schools that are expensive. But, you know, the Catholic schools that I went to, we, we collected paper, we had paper drives, we sold chocolate door to door, we did, 
everything, you know, in addition to, you know, my parents paying, you know, they, they were taxed for the, you know, by the government to pay for public schools, but then they had to pay, you know, tuition for me to, and uniforms and that type of stuff. But I think I might have been better off going to a public school. I think because there wasn't any, um, I think, not just for this, but for, let's take this as an example. I don't know anything about it. You, you, I've been learning right now, just with you. Um, there should be a, well, you could ask, I want you to close your eyes. Can you visualize a, uh, a cute puppy? What does he look, you know? I, I'm not sure how you do I just give him a test. Well, the test there, you know. Um, I think that should be something, you know, you should test kids that are in grade school for give them an eye test. Of course, parents should take the kids to get an eye test, you know. Uh I guess even maybe as babies now or whatever. I don't know. Like I said, I'm 78 years old. You should test kids, you know, have an eye test, a hearing test uh, early on and test for some other. This would, should be one of them. And then you would know, I guess I don't know, they don't know very much right now. Then you would... Um, I can remember when I was a junior in high school, um, there was a thing called the National Scholarship Test, I think it was. All juniors in high school on the same day across the United States took the same test and the results came in and were printed out and, you know, you were rated, there was a graph, bar graph, you know, bar graphed and numbers and whatever, and you could see uh, where you compared, like against, you could see where you compared against the kids in your school, where you compared against the kids in your community, I guess state, or whatever, and where, how you compared against the nation's juniors. And so we did take that to what was required, even though you were a private school, what was required. I, by the way, if you're in school or recently or a teacher, a teacher, do they still do that? I have a feeling that I bet you some years ago at some point that there was um, a movement, okay, the Federal government has absolutely no right to make us take these this test, a standardized test, and so they can pay, you know, whatever. I have a feeling they probably did away with that, which would be a terrible thing to do. They should have kept it. Anyway, I got that test, and there, there was an overall, like, you know, a general score. You know, there was reading, writing, and whatever, you know. And I was just above, I was in the middle, just above average. You know, you have really smart people, really dumb people, and then you have people in the middle, and I was slightly above the middle. But on mathematics, which I don't think had anything to do with this image problem, well, it would on the testing, because if they were these blocks or, you know, whatever. But on mathematics, I was in the, like, bottom, to the, the graph went down and it was like I was in the bottom 5% or whatever of the nation. And then it came to ability to read the material and interpolate it, uh, understand it, and find the inconsistencies with it or whatever. They had a description of these categories. I was in the top, 
you know, 5%. So I had this, had this graft, you know, on the, that went, you know, and then, you know, like that. So, um, but there should be a, a test for what, and it should be for other things too in school as early at the appropriate, you know, thing, because if you have this disability, uh, you shouldn't be a, I don't know, what job should you not have? Maybe not be an architect, uh, maybe not be a brain surgeon, because maybe a brain surgeon, I don't know. The brain's there, you're working on it, but maybe you need to be able to visualize that if you reach around, because you have, you know, machines that are showing, you know, x-rays, live x-rays of, you know, imaging and all that kind of, I don't know, but it would seem like, okay, you know, you call the parents in and I guess call the kid in depending on what the age is or whatever. Uh, And you say, you know, astronaut, okay. Okay, your son or daughter should not be an astronaut. Uh, well, what could my daughter do? Uh, McDonald's. No, I'm not sure. Um, but this is something I'm going to look into again. And if you happen to know anything about it or whatever, leave a, uh, you know, in the comment section, you can put a link to like something like this, or if you find something that, or a video, maybe a YouTube video, you can go ahead and put a link to, uh, you know, a link to that. And maybe I should do, I didn't do that yet. Maybe I should go to, yeah, what are we missing here? Jim, what are we missing? I might have brothers or sisters out there who we could form a society. We could ask for uh, disability. Okay, so I'll put, I'll check these out. Oh, this is even a TED Talk. Eight minutes. I definitely will put this. Let's watch this. Close your eyes. Go ahead, close them. Picture yourself sitting on a beautiful beach, gazing out over the water. Feel the warm sun on your skin. Are you sitting in a chair? Perhaps on a towel in the sand. Keeping your eyes closed, raise your hands when you can see yourself on the beach. Okay, open your eyes and look around. Leave your hands up if you can still see the beach clearly. Okay, you can put them down. You can see that most of us were able to visualize an image using the mind's eye. Now, what if I told you to think of yourself on a beach without picturing it? Go ahead, try. Do not picture a beach with turquoise clear water and white sands. No, get rid of the image. Can you do that? Okay. Now look around. Most of you pictured beaches, but since you can never share a mental picture with the person next to you, you take it for granted. Everyone's beach must be more or less the same as yours, right? Well, I hate to burst your bubble. Actually, no, I really love it. But we all see things entirely differently. While some people see in color so vivid, it is as real as life, or they can paint it any color they wish, others may have more faded images or see only in black and white. But you all use your mental imagery every single day. Let me pause and ask you this. Would your life be any different if you suddenly lost this ability to visit?
Oh, okay. So I have something to... I have something to do here. And I have a... Hmm. Isn't the internet wonderful? And isn't YouTube wonderful? There's a whole bunch of these. We should form a... Those of us who don't have this ability, I think we should be the ruling class. We should, let's see here. We should, uh, we should be the rulers. Why should we be the rulers? I don't know, but I think that we are special and we should be in charge. Maybe the United, change the Constitution of the United States and we'll have, uh, in order to be a United States Senator, you have to have this inability to image for some reason. I don't think there's time with me at 78 years of age to uh, start an organization for this or uh, accomplish this, but anyway, thank you very much for, uh, thank you very much for watching.